My name is Dr. Esther Trufan, and in this video, I am going to demonstrate a method that will allow us to calculate the density of irregular objects. Now, an irregular object is anything that doesn't look like a rectangle or a cube, for which it would be really hard to come up with three dimensions, the product of which is going to give us a volume. Most of our solids are in this category. And here is a collection of random items. We're going to select one of these and on one of those, I will demonstrate what to do. You can take any of these objects and perform the same measurement on your own. I'm going to select these washers. They may be made of stainless steel, but I have no idea. However, after I determine its density, I can look up a table for stainless steel, compare my value to the accepted literature value for the density of stainless steel, and draw a conclusion based on that comparison. The way to measure the volume of an irregular object is by dunking it in water. And that means we can only use this measurement for materials that are going to submerge in water. Anything that floats on top of it is not suitable for this type of measurement. So I will need some water for my measurement and a graduated cylinder. So I may determine the volume of the water before I dunk my items in it and after. For density, we are going to determine the volume and we also need to determine mass. For mass, I am going to use a scale. Let's get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is pour approximately 15 milliliters of water into my graduated cylinder. This does not have to be exact, but rather approximately 15 milliliters. The important part here though, we need to record that volume as exact as we can. And so we're going to get ourselves to eye level, find the meniscus of our water, and then record its volume. My volume is between 15 and 16 milliliters. That means I'm going to use a number to estimate which value it's closer to, which in this case, it is closer to 16. I will estimate that number to be eight. So 15.8 milliliters of water by itself. Next, I am going to measure the mass of my graduated cylinder and the water that's within. I'm going to turn on my scale, make sure that it shows me 0.00, .00 and then place my graduated cylinder with the water inside on top of it. I will record the mass that it shows me, which in this case is 89.05 grams. I'm not going to use this measurement for much other than reference for what comes after. Now I can take off my graduated cylinder, open my container of irregular objects, and then transfer as many of them inside the water carefully so it doesn't break the glass, so that the difference between my volume for the water and the volume after I submerged some of these items exceeds at least a difference of one milliliter. So I am starting with 15.8 milliliters. I can turn it gently to the side and slide my metal object. It is exceeded the 16, but I would like it to be a little bit more. So I'm going to submerge another one and another one and maybe all five. The larger the volume, the more likely it is that we're not introducing the rounding errors in our measurement. Before we move further in our experiment, we need to make sure that we didn't trap any air bubbles inside our graduated cylinder. So if it seems like there may be air bubbles, we can shake it a little bit and then the air bubbles should come to the surface. Now we record the volume of our mixture. We have our metal pieces inside and then we have our water. We lower ourselves to eye level with our meniscus. We find that our volume is between 17 and 18. It seems to be close to the middle of that. So we're going to say it is 17.5. We have our volume before and after. The difference will give us the volume of our objects. Now we need to do the same with the mass. We take our object submerged in water and our graduated cylinder and place it on the scale, and we record our new mass. In this case, it is 105.07 grams. The difference in mass, 
before and after is going to give us the mass of the irregular objects that we have. From the mass and the volume that we just determined by measurement, we can calculate the density for these objects. And then if we compare it to the density of stainless steel, we may or may not be proven correct in our hypothesis. Thank you.